Now, the controversy was, you know, because Dexter wins and everyone was saying, you know, there's no way Dexter's going to win again next year. I think that was that was the consensus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people thought, oh, it was a one time one and done type of thing. And, you know, I don't know if Dexter cared at that point because he had won the Olympia. You know, that was just his goal. And he always told people history. Yeah. Yeah. Once you win, it doesn't matter. You can't take away my Olympia title. I created Stacy's Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Stacy's Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the history of bodybuilding on uh, the brink of the 2023 Olympia week. I'm joined, of course, with John Hansen. And uh, John, we're going to be talking today about the 2008 Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Won by Dexter Jackson. And uh, if you ever look at Dexter Jackson's Instagram, he's uh, uh, Mr. Olympia 08, right? That's his name. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> and I remember him telling someone, he goes, doesn't matter. Right. What shows I win, I'll always be Mr. Olympia. You yeah, know? throughout history. Yeah, you never yeah, forget. Yeah. I mean, that was really a monumental, you know, win for Dexter because Jay had been so dominant, you know, prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, he had a little slip the year before, you know, with uh, Victor Martinez. A lot of people thought, thought Victor should have won that Olympia in 07. And uh, rather than coming back better, Jay came, it kind of came back worse in, uh, in 08. Yeah. And, uh, talk to me about what you remember about that show. Well, I think this is a very significant show in bodybuilding history because I think it was the first show where the internet really played a part. Before this, you know, we didn't have, all we had was the magazines. So right. if you had a controversial decision like the 1980 Olympia, 1981 Olympia, uh, the fans couldn't really voice their opinion. You know, you never heard from the fans right. uh, unless they wrote a letter to the magazine, the magazine published <laughs> it. But other than that, it, it was never, you could never hear the fans' opinion. Right. But in 2008, we didn't have Facebook then. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have all these social media sites that we have now. But we did have the bodybuilding forums. Right. And we had bodybuilding.com and Muscle Mayhem. And this is where everybody said, oh, that was a bullshit decision. 2007 was a bullshit decision. And, our, and uh, at the time, uh, I was working for MuscularDevelopment.com. We had those forums. And obviously, Victor yes. and Dexter were, were athletes for Muscular Development. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So all year long now, you had the fans saying, you know, Jay shouldn't have beat Victor. It was a bullshit decision. I remember they, they had this one picture of Jay. He was standing backstage and he had his hands against the uh, the wall. You remember this? Yeah, I remember. You see his glutes were soft and his lower back was soft. And they were calling him the refrigerator. Yeah. So poor Jay took it on the chin all year. And I the know. judges noticed this. And so when Jay came in off at the pre-judging in 2008, they said, we got to take it away from him. And this was unprecedented. And if you think right. about it, Dave, if you go back through bodybuilding history, yeah. Arnold won six times in a row. Then Lee Haney won eight times in a row. And then Dorian won six times in a row. Ronnie won eight times in a row. So Mr. Olympia would never lose. You couldn't dethrone him unless he decided not to compete anymore. He never got dethroned. And so when Jay finally beat Ronnie in 2006, that was the first time that happened in over – what was it, 20 year, 22 years since yeah. 1984. And so now we are in the internet age now, and this changed everything because now you're getting the fans reaction and you're getting it all year long. And the judges, 
you know, took this criticism all year. So they said, we can't let this keep happening because now we're going to hear it from the fans. So I think that that was a significant year in 2008. And Bla- and Blackman was, you know, was was posting up crazy pictures from the year before with Victor versus Jay. And I mean, yeah. a lot of editorials in there. And so, you know, when Jay came in off, there had to be a change. The problem was Jay was so much bigger than everyone else. And it was like, who is going to win? Yeah. And I don't know what your insight was. You know, Dexter was always the guy who was the most sliced guy in the lineup. And yeah. I actually felt that in 08, he really – he wasn't as hard as I'd seen him in the past. Like, I didn't think that was the best Dexter we'd seen. He was good enough to win, obviously, because his conditioning yeah. was way better than Jay's. But I didn't think it was the best Dexter we'd ever seen. What, what was your opinion on that? Yeah, I actually had uh, Phil Heath in first. Phil got third. Phil was third. Yeah, people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. After watching the show, I, I wrote a report of it for uh, Bodybuilding.com, and I, I had Phil Heath as the winner. So – um yeah, I thought Dexter was going to be second and maybe Jay third because Jay was way off at the prejudging. But Jay did look much better at the night show. I don't know if you remember that. He lost a lot of water between yeah. the Friday and Saturday night show. Right. And he looked way better on Saturday. And I thought he might pull it off. I thought the judges might reward him for Saturday night and then give it to him anyways because he was the reigning champ. But uh, no, they didn't. They took it away from him. Yeah, and uh, this is Dexter winning right here. You can see Jay's upset, and uh, and Dexter's like crying and everything like that. And it, yeah. was, it was emotional because I don't I don't think that uh, Dexter really. I mean, I'm sure if you asked him before the show, he said he was going to win, but I don't think he really thought he was really going to no, win. You know? No, no. <laughs> and I I actually worked with uh, Tony uh, Freeman that year, and Freeman was insane. If you remember, that was yeah, awesome. Freeman That's was an awesome kid. Yeah. He was just unreal that year, and. Uh, uh, a lot of people thought that Tony should have won because he was so much bigger than everyone else, you know? Yeah, yeah. Let's pull that picture up here. Hold on. Is this the... Uh... Where did he place, Freeman? He Freeman fourth. was fourth or fifth or something like that. Fifth. I think Dennis Wolf was fourth, right? Yeah, you're yeah. right. Dennis Wolf was fourth, right? Yeah, yeah Wolf was what Tony was... But I, I, and, and Melvin was right in sixth place right there. Yes, so, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, you can see this from this picture. I mean, I mean, look at who just... Lo- I mean, Wolf and, and and Freeman stick out the most, you know. Yeah. Here, if you yeah. think about it, just structure wise. Yeah, yeah, their height and their width. Yeah. And if you look at Phil, you can see Phil really, really has such great aesthetics, doesn't he? When he was a little mm-hmm. smaller. Yeah. He didn't have the the three D look. You know, I think his muscle maturity wasn't where it needed to be, and that's probably why he didn't win the show. But he was aesthetic. I mean, a small waist, his his midsection was flat. Yeah. And. Uh, it really was a wide open show, and I think Dexter just had too much, you know, seniority. Really, is why I think they they put him in there. Mm-hmm. And I, if I remember correctly, I think Wolf was a little on the smoother side from behind. Okay, I I, I think his conditioning just wasn't as is is because from the front he looked like the winner. You know, I think from behind he was a little, if I remember correctly, he was a little off. You know, and uh, I think that's what cost him not uh, winning the show because. I mean, like I said, if you look at the silhouette of Wolf, you can really yeah. make a case for Wolf right. winning that show. I mean, it would, no one would have complained, probably. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Dex, Dexter was really good. And uh, let me see, pull up this picture here. Now, the controversy was, you know, because Dexter wins and everyone was saying, you know, there's no way Dexter's going to win again next year. I think that was, that was the consensus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... You know, a lot of people thought, oh, it was a one-time, one-and-done type of thing. And, you know, I don't know if Dexter cared at that point because he had won the Olympia, you know. Right. That was his, right. that was his goal. He's and he always told people. History. Yeah, yeah, once you win, it doesn't matter. You can't take away my Olympia title. Right, but, right. Um, and then, obviously, Jay made that comeback. And uh, and I don't think anyone – no one's regained the Olympia. No one's title. ever done that before. No, yeah. that's never yeah. happened before. Before or since, and so in fact, only, I didn't. I didn't think it was going to happen because it never happened before. But yeah, but, if you're, uh, the Olympia was changing back then. You know, the judges were becoming more open with their, you know, their decisions. You know, they would give right. it to somebody new. They would take the title away from right. somebody if they were off. They would even give the title back to somebody if they came back and won again. So yeah. everything was changing right around that time. Yeah. That was 15 years ago. And Phil Heath dropped the fifth the following year. But you know, a lot of people what they don't realize is a lot of people say to. If, if you follow the sport and, and maybe you don't remember, Victor should have won in 07. Everyone's yeah. like, well, what happened to Victor in 08? He, he wasn't even in the lineup. Yeah. Victor tore his uh, patella tendon. Yeah. Yeah. Right after that show. 
uh, I think over the the winter, and he was out of commission. And it was amazing that he even made a comeback from that. That's a brutal injury. Yeah. And it was a freak accident. And I remember I, I Gleckman sent me out to his house the, like the day after his surgery to fix it mm. and interview him. He was all doped up and you know on a, iced up, and his leg was this big. And I'm like, what? Because I always say Victor Martinez has. Him and, uh, and Nathan Deasha have the worst luck of, it, of any two body Yeah. I mean, because Victor was the heir apparent. I mean, there was no – Victor would have been Mr. Olympia in 08 for sure yeah. because they would have given it to him because they, they know that he should have won in 07. Yeah. Yeah. He, he would have slipped right in there and probably won, you know, maybe another two Olympias, you know, after that if he, yeah. uh, if he would have yeah. won. He would have had the momentum from the year before. So that's why Victor wasn't there. And so Dexter and Dexter was a deadly competitor because Dexter was always right there in the fold, mm -hmm. always in shape, waiting for for the top guys to just be <laughs> a little bit off their game. Right. right. <laughs> and he and, and that's what he did in 08. It was it was really an anomalous year because Dexter always had problems with size because these guys always were bigger than him. The Wolves, mm -hmm. the Freemans, the Jays, and because of that, you know, a lot of times he would lose to these guys, you know, yeah. if they were at their best, you know, and and this was like the perfect storm of everyone was a little bit off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why and do you think? Why do you think Phil didn't win in 08? I just I don't think he had that that, you know, it's like comparing. I think a good analogy would be comparing Hadi Chopin from last year to Derek Lunsford. Lunsford had, I think, was had a prettier physique. His conditioning mm -hmm. was really good, but he didn't have. Everyone is saying he just didn't have enough depth. Like yeah. the muscle maturity is not there. He hasn't been training long enough, and I think that's what the knock against Heath was. Heath had all the body parts; they all flowed nice. He, his conditioning was always good, but he didn't have like the deep separation in those muscles. And I think that yeah. just took a few years longer before he got that. What was his first Olympia win in in eleven or ten? 11, but I thought he should have won in 10. Yeah, he probably should have. But yeah, yeah, I was there that year, and I thought for sure he had a better physique than Jay. So yeah. Jay Jay was dominant in 09, but I thought Phil should have beat him in 10, and then Phil did beat yeah. him in 11. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times they give the Mr. Olympia the benefit of the doubt. I think that's when they gave Jay in 07. Mm -hmm. He came back in 08 and still wasn't 100%, and they said, well, we're not going to throw you another bone. Right, um, right. And because of that, you know um, – that's what happened, and that's what happened with Phil. You know, I mean, and and Jay. I think you know, Jay, they gave Jay a bone, and they threw him another bone in ten, and then in eleven, you know, I yeah, think they said, "All right, you're out of there." <laughs> you know, and I think he had the torn bicep in eleven, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So Phil in oh um, nine is that when he had the food poisoning and he dropped to fifth, or supposedly? Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I love that whenever guys are off, they always get food poisoning. I just want to tell you something. Like, it's really hard to get food poisoning. Like, yeah. it, it, from American food, like, I can, if you went to Mexico, I'd say, all right, maybe you got, you know, Montezuma's revenge. Everyone uses the old food poisoning. It's usually over over diuretics. That's usually what what, what the. Uh, yeah, he, said he, he said he got it from fish. Yeah, you know, Chris, that was the first, you know, time, I heard, was the first time I heard that excuse. So I believe Chris, it. you know what Chris calls it? Aceto calls it the Lasix fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Lasix fish. Right. Uh, right. But uh, yeah, because Cedric used to always claim food poisoning too all the time at the Olympia. Yeah. I think he was over diureticing himself too, yeah. just because he was like nervous he wasn't going to be hard enough. So, yeah. like yeah. I said, I don't think I've ever seen a legitimate case of food poisoning. It's usually because, you know, you take too many diuretics, you get too dehydrated, you get nauseous, and you can start throwing up and get diarrhea from it. So right. it is and that is a typical side effect, especially guys who take them too long. And that's why I never really understood why guys would do five days of diuretics. It just doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I remember, um, remember Ben Aziza when he took him for weeks before oh he died? Oh, my God. I know. Crazy. He would stay on him the whole European tour. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how – I mean, that's insane, you know, to not let your body's electrolytes balance themselves off. It's just – it's not – and, and the, he, the he, weird thing is he looked good, too. I don't even know how he did it. Right. I think he was dehydrating, too. He was taking oh, Lasix, and he wasn't drinking oh, water. He was God. just eating um, – he was eating applesauce. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty – Yeah, in, in the history of, of bodybuilders, there weren't too many guys that extreme, like, you know – before a show, I I never heard of any kooky, crazy like like yeah. 
concoctions like Ben Aziza was doing. And I, I no one really knows what Munzer was doing, but he was doing some kooky stuff too, I think, which is yeah. probably why he ran into trouble. But um, most guys are pretty much, you know, if they overdo the diuretics, it's because they're usually on them too long or they're trying mm -hmm. to compensate because they're not in shape. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at Ben Aziza when he took fifth at that Olympia in 92 – and then his condition just a couple of weeks later when he was doing the Grand Prix Tour, he was yeah. much, much harder. Oh, you know, yeah. at the Olympia, he wasn't really that hard. He was big and bulky, but he wasn't really shredded. So he got really shredded for that. Yeah. And I talked to a couple of people that competed with him, like Porter Cottrell and right. Steve Lisbois and uh, LQ Gurley. And they said he was hard as a rock. They said he was like concrete. I think he, I think he was severely dehydrated. Yeah, you know, really he was doing a lot of drugs too, a lot of anabolics. Yes. And, you know, when you overdo the anabolics, you can definitely retain excessive fluid. And I think that's what happened at the Olympia. And then he realized he needed more diuretic to get rid of the, the, uh, the fluid. But, you know, it's very easy to, 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 to take too much, yeah. especially when you're on it too long also. Yeah. Yeah. He even had a little gyno at that Olympia, I think. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know what that was being caused by, but you know, these guys, you know, back in the day, they, they would think that they had a drug for everything. You know, mm -hmm. I will. I don't want to say who the person is. I had a guy come to my house once. He was a European bodybuilder, nice, super nice guy, great guy, and you know, he had been traveling, so he had his suitcases with him, and one suitcase was his clothing, the small suitcase, and then he had a big suitcase, and when he opened it up, it was like a pharmacy in there. I, I, I couldn't believe. What he had, I said, how did you, how did you get this stuff through customs? Right. I just took it. I said, you're out of your mind. I said, yeah. I couldn't believe it wasn't just your typical anabolics. It was like diuretics and, and electrolytes and solutions and yeah. IV bags. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this was like a, like a chemistry set he had in there. It was insane. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah. But the, that's that was a back in the day. That was a European European body was really into all that, you know, like yeah, like Serge Dubray. Yeah, I, I just think it's oh, whenever you do too much that last week, too many manipulations, you're you're really asking for trouble, and yeah. not yeah. necessarily that you're gonna kill yourself, but you more than likely you're just gonna screw up your conditioning because you're playing with too many variables, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you were interviewing Jay, did he mention that he thought his best years were chasing Ronnie? And not after yeah. Ronnie retired. Yeah. Yeah. He, he felt that once Ronnie was gone, he like didn't have anything to push him anymore. Yeah. Oh, nine. He wanted to prove to everyone that he was back, you know, that he could win again. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That was his motivation. But once he won, oh, nine, it was like he, he had no one pushing him. He said he, yeah. he even he admitted it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think his oh, one conditioning was probably his best. Mm -hmm. But that might have been because he was younger and he had no injuries and, you know, it just, you know, it's, I think sometimes your body just looks better younger. You know? Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I think in those years after 01, you know, for those three or four years after when he was chasing Ronnie, he had no chance to beat him, but he was giving it his all and he was taking yeah. second, second, second. I think he took three yeah. seconds in a row. Yeah. But I think when he, when Ronnie finally retired and then he finally won, he was kind of after his peak, you know what right. I mean? Right. Right. Except for he 09, said he really, really came back strong. He said, "I never would have put that much size on had it what, had it not been for Ronnie." And he right. goes, "I probably wouldn't have needed it." I, he goes, "I might have looked better, you know, smaller." Yeah, yeah, like an old one. Yeah, because he said my waist did get bigger as I got bigger. You know, I said, "Well, luckily you have like the widest shoulders in the history of bodybuilding, yeah. yeah. so it doesn't even matter." I said, "But you remember how he looked in uh, 02 when he won that Ironman and the uh, Arnold? Man, he was incredible there." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and then I he got, didn't do I the Olympia after Olympia. that. He skipped yeah. the Olympia. So. Yeah, he skipped the Olympia that year, which was a huge mistake because I think oh. he could have won that year. Oh, he would have because Ronnie was not as bad. Ronnie was way off, yeah. And Ronnie lost to uh, Gunther, you know, at that yeah, strength, show of strength. So Jay yeah. definitely would have beat him probably. Yeah, were you at that show, Dave, 02? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The audience booed when Ronnie won. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> which was the first time I had ever seen that. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. really what motivated Ronnie to take the whole year off and come back in 03 looking insane. Yeah, yeah. But which also, you know, Jay made a point. I didn't even think about it. That which also might have led to his back problems, you know, because mm. think about how great he was in 03. And then all of a sudden, in 04, you know, he's coming back with, with, you know, with problems. Yeah. You know? yeah so maybe, you know, maybe he overdid it, you know. 
yeah. pushed his body so hard. He, he was so big, you know, that it just was just too much stress for his, his, his structure to handle. Yeah, it was the year of redemption. He wanted that redemption. Yeah, after he, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he did. I mean, Jay was amazing in, in, in 03, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, matter of fact, when Chris said he saw Jay come out, he's like, oh, Jay's going to win. The, he's going to win the Olympia. And, <laughs> and then Ryan came out last and everyone was like, what? 287. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Yeah, that was unbelievable. There was a cost associated with that. You yeah, know, the, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you paid it. But Dexter's, you know, even look, Jay said it when I interviewed him. Also, Dexter was better when he was younger. Yes, but and as he got older, he was still dominant. But he wasn't going against guys that were as, were as good. Yeah. So he still was winning shows, but he wasn't he wasn't as good as he what he was when he was you know yes yeah. in, in his earlier forties. You know. Yeah. So, oh, wait, he was still at that, the peak of his powers, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. you know, could he have won 09? I don't think anyone was going to beat Jay in 09. No. no. He actually took third in 09 because Jay yeah. uh, Branch was second. Br Br that was the best Branch ever looked. And then yeah. Branch tore his quad after that, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was like another bad luck, you know. And, and Branch did it slipping also, like you know, a yeah. freak accident, which. Yeah. You know, Branch did come back and win the Arnold after that, but you know, he was never the same Branch. I think he would, by his own admission, would admit that as well. Now, did Victor do the Arnold in 08 after he lost the Olympia in 07? Because I know he lost the I know he lost the Arnold in 09 to uh, Kai Green. He only won the Arnold one year, right? So, what yeah. year was that that he won it? I'll look it up. Hold on. Keep talking. <laughs> Yeah, because I think he, he took second to Kai in 09. And he looked oh, wait. No, oh, wait, he didn't. I think he tore he tore his quad right after that. I mean, his uh, patella tendon right after that. So, I don't think he had, I think it was right before the Arnold. Before the Arnold, okay. Yeah, yeah. 07, he won it. So he won it oh, 07. 07. Yeah. Dexter was second. And then he, you know, he should have won the Olympia 07. Yeah. And then he tore yeah. the patella tendon right before the Arnold, like a couple of weeks before that. Oh, okay. And he couldn't, okay. And he couldn't defend the title yet. I who, mean, won in, yeah. who won in 08 then, Kai? The, the Arnold? Uh, I think Kai won in 09. The Arnold was won by Dexter. So Dexter won in 08. So uh, Dexter okay. won the Arnold and the Olympia that same year. Oh, okay. Phil was second. Actually, I, it, Phil looked really good that year, too. Really did look really good that year. I remember that one. Yeah. But uh, I mean, there was some there were some great people. Forget there were some really great battles, you know, between oh, yeah. those two guys, yeah. you know, all those guys. I mean, it was yeah. it was pretty exciting at that point. And then, you know, once Kai stopped competing, I think it lost some of the luster for a while uh, mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And, you know, Phil kind of dominated, but he wasn't, you know, he was a dominant champion, but he wasn't like a big giant freak. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was just, there was no one to challenge him. Yeah. That's why Jay said, I said every year, we, I, you would ask me who's going to win. I say Phil, because who yeah. else is there, you know? Yeah. Phil was a better version of, of, of Kai. Uh, excuse me. Phil was a better version of uh, Dexter. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And but well, Big Dexter, Big, was, Big Bobby looked good that year. He took second too, Phil. Yeah, not too bad. I think that you know Dexter's to Dexter's credit. You know, I don't think I ever saw Dexter at a show where he was what I would call off. Maybe but, off to Dexter, but that that was still harder than everyone else in the show. Right, and right. Think about how many years he competed for to never show up out of shape ever. In all those contests, too. He wouldn't just do the Olympia. He'd do the Arnold. He'd do a lot of those Grand Prix yeah. shows. Yeah. It, you know, if you roll the dice enough times, you, your, your number's going to come up. Yeah, and that's yeah, really that's what happened true. with Dexter. He won yeah. the Olympia because he rolled the dice so many times. Right. Eventually, the guys who were better than him – or bigger than him would the, the odds say they have to be off at some point, you know? Yeah. And that's what happened. And that's why we won the 08 Olympia. And I, it just goes, it's a testament to how great Dexter was. And it's a testament to the fact that if you have staying power, meaning you can exist in a sport for a very long time at, at an elite level, yeah. that more than likely you're going to win a championship before it's over. Yeah. And know, also, he only competed you know, for five because, years. I mean, it's a little harder. He competed for what twenty five years or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. And also, like we said, with the social media, he kind of got lucky because that yeah. was the time when things were turning around. And you right. know, like I said, people don't remember, but back then at the Olympia, I remember Sean Ray said, "Mr. Olympia could come out with in a wheelchair, and he's still going to win." <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Was Joe Weida still around in 08? Yeah, I think so. Oh, he was? Yeah. yeah that, so that I mean, that was a, probably a tough decision for Joe to swallow because, yeah. you know, Jay was his, uh, his yeah. workhorse there. You yeah. know, his, uh, he was the guy on the cover of all the magazines. He was selling product from. Yeah. And I, and I, it's funny, I interviewed uh, Lavroni today. And oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Kevin uh, was telling me, you know, that, that Joe told him, you know, he kept, he asked Joe before Joe died. He had, he had met with him and he said, um, how come I, how come I can't win an Olympia? And Joe's like, he said, listen, Kevin, <laughs> um, you, uh, Flex, uh, Sean, uh, it doesn't matter whether you place first, second, third, or I flip you guys around. I make just as much money. I don't make any more money. <laughs> he goes, you guys might make some more money, but I don't make any more money. Right. But if Dorian wins the Olympia, I make a lot more money because he's got mm. a bigger reach. And, and, uh. and Kevin said, he's like, don't take it personal, Kevin. It's a, it's a business decision. Mm. He said, but you look great. You hold your conditioning. You should do every Grand Prix every single year after the Olympia because you can win those and you can go home with more money than the guy who wins the Olympia. Yeah. And that's why Kevin did that. If you remember, Kevin would go and he would win all the Grand Prix after the Olympia. Yeah. And he would go. I mean, one he was telling me about when he won Russia that one year, they paid him 75 grand in cash. Wow. And they didn't want to let him leave because they wanted him. They thought because they gave him all that cash that he should stay an extra week or two and <laughs> teach them all his secrets. And, yeah. and he said, they took my my visa and passport. I wasn't going to be able to leave. He said I was scared. He goes, it took three hours, and they finally released me. He said, but wow, that's he, it. yeah. He said that, and that was back when the he goes the mafia, the the Russian mob brought right. him for that show and put up cash for that show. Wow, so, that was yeah. prize money for the Russian Grand Prix, seventy five grand. So he got seventy five grand cash for that win. Wow, which means it was really like one hundred fifty because he didn't have to pay taxes on it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that, I mean, so Kevin listened to Joe and said, didn't, he's like, I didn't take it personal. I said, you know what? Maybe that's not my goal. That, and he goes, that's why I never really pushed to the limits because he said, I knew that I wasn't going to be Dorian. And I yeah. think he said, Flex knew that, that we knew we weren't going to be Dorian. And um, so I kind of had a different outlook on how I was going to, you know, prep. He goes, I know I didn't need it to, I didn't need to do any, any drugs you know, for six, you know, until four months out. And then I would just gear up and, and do the show. And I looked, at, you know, I would get all my size back because I had that ability to do it. And I did well. And I did, did the Grand Prix and, you know, I, I, I kept my health. And, you know, so he, there was a, an intelligent design behind what Kevin was doing. People thought, yeah. well, Kevin was just being Kevin, you know. He's like, no, he goes, I trained hard when I trained. I said, I've seen you in the gym. I know you yeah. trained hard. Yeah. When he That's tore a pack, you know, he was uh, after the what was that the ninety two Olympia after the ninety two Olympia yeah he yeah was, he was he second was to do the um, ninety three Arnold and he told right him. he said he was he said I went back into the gym after the Olympia I was all Good psyched afternoon, John. how can I help Oops, what was that oh that you yeah that was Siri oh. <laughs> Siri, Siri wanted to answer the question yeah he went to the gym Siri knew the answer <laughs> yeah and he was bench pressing six hundred pounds. Because wow. he was so strong, and uh, and the peck just gave out. He said, "I said, and, I, and you know, people don't believe it. I've seen Kevin bench press five hundred easily. Oh yeah, I did too. So I six hundred probably at that point when he was young, he probably he was probably able to do it. I'm sure. Yeah, those Mitsuro videos, he was bench pressing five hundred. Yeah. So I mean, if you think you know, when you get off a show and you get all bloated up with water and everything like that, you become crazy strong. That's why I tell people be very careful because when you have no body fat, you're very vulnerable to joints. I remember." Titus pulled something after he after he had lost the USA in '95 to Phil Hearn, and he went into the gym and and with no warm up, bet tried to bench press 500 pounds and popped his pec a yeah. little bit. And you know, they whoever fixed his pec because it was an intramuscular tear did an awesome job because you could never see the, the oh, pec. Oh yeah, tear. that was great. And yeah. he competed the following year and won the USA. He won. So. Yeah, he won the Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know what else that happened to was Barry DeMay after he took third at the 88 Olympia I didn't know that. in early 89, January of 89, he tore his pec. Interesting. I didn't even know that. That yeah. was the peak of his career. He was thought, okay, I'm on a high next right. year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do good. You know, I'm going to do even better. And then he tore his pec. The, I'm t I, to any young people watching this, because older guys know better, but to the young guys watching this, after a show, 
you're going to get what I call it's instead of beer muscles, it's water muscles. Basically, <laughs> yeah. you get bloated, you gain 40 pounds after the show, and you think you can lift the whole gym, and you know what? You can't. the The muscles are vulnerable. Yeah, they have no no fat supporting them. They're they're weak because you know you just went through a contest prep. You got to take it easy, even if you feel strong. Don't go setting records in the gym. It's it's a big big mistake. And you can talk to a lot of bodybuilders over the years who pop muscles. Yeah, major major talented guys that, that have torn stuff. Because yeah, of that. that's interesting that you mentioned about Lavroni because I think besides Arnold, I, I think Lavroni was the only high level bodybuilder that would like take off and get off the drugs and let his body weight go down. And then I think know, Sean Ray too. I think Sean Ray did also. Oh yeah. Okay. I guess post with Sean Ray one year at a show. Uh, I was an amateur. He was a pro. I met, I think metrics had provided me. And I think, um, uh, Weeder had provided him. He, he looked like he never even worked out. It was embarrassing. He was embarrassed. Wow. He, goes, I'm embar he goes, I'm embarrassed to go out there. I said, well, why would you not? He goes, because you know, we don't get, I don't get paid for this. This is part of my Weeder contract. I don't, I'm not going to, take drugs, you know, just for guest posing. So I don't think, I don't think Sean took a lot of stuff off season, you know, at mm. all. Okay. But he was out of shape too. He was like fat, you know, he was like, you could just was tell. I, I was shocked because I, but because he would get in such good shape and blow up, but he was, a, he was obviously a hyper responder too. You know, yeah. Drugs. Was he, was he big or was he small like Kevin? No, he was small and just out of shape. And wow. He was terrible. He huh. was, it was, it was like I said, he was just sitting around. We were signing pictures and that's how, when I first met him, we became kind of friendly. And um, we were just talking. He's like, oh, I don't want to go out there and guest post. He goes, I said, why not? He's like, I don't look, he goes, I don't look good. He knew. He knew. Yeah. yeah. You know, he goes, I've been eating you know, whatever I want. I haven't really been training much. Put yeah. some time off. I said, wow. And, and so when I saw him at the Olympia that year, I couldn't believe you know, how he transformed. Yeah. Himself. Yeah. But yeah those Arnold, Arnold used to do that too. When uh, Well, toward the end of Arnold's career, when he did uh, Stay Hungry and then he went into the right. Olympia, he only got right. he got in shape in three months. And then, of course, yeah. his comeback, he was coming back from five years off. Right. And then right. he got in shape in like supposedly eight weeks or 10 weeks or something. Yeah. But the best, I think the best Arnold ever looked was when he wasn't taking time off when he was, what was right. it, uh, right. 74 Olympia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was huge. He was, yeah. Any, anytime between like 70 and 74, he was just big all the time. Yeah. He was just like, I think that was his best ever. I mean, yeah, yeah. If he would have kept going from seventy four, he would have been like a, a monstrous freak. I think, yeah. you know, I think he was learning his body more too at that point. And uh, yeah, yeah. Those guys overtrained like crazy. I don't even know how they looked as big as they did. To be honest with you, I don't either. He was training six days a week, sometimes twice a day, and they would train for hours. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't even have to, they were training legs barefoot. You know, remember they, <laughs> yeah. they would do like, like, oh, my legs Lots. need more work. I'll just do 87 sets, you know, of, of yeah, right, blocks, you yeah, know, right. <laughs> right. Total high volume. Right. Yeah, it, It's amazing. They, 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 they had no clue. A lot of these guys, what the heck they were doing. Yeah. So, but you know that, and that's why you can't really judge Arnold's physique against guys today because the, the knowledge is so yeah. much greater. And the technology I mean, too. Yeah. Oh Yeah. There was no machines back then. It was like it was all free weights. Yeah, yeah. If you look at Sergio's physique too, it's amazing what he did. I mean, he he was working full time jobs. You know, <laughs> he was working. At, he was working in a factory all eight hours, and then oh, he was trained for three hours. Oh my I mean, god, unbelievable! And there was no yeah. air conditioning back then. Oh, <laughs> You'd be training and probably, probably eating three meals a day. Probably eating three meals a day, John. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, well, I knew a guy from Chicago once, and he knew this guy who was a manager at this uh, foundry he was working at. Right. And the guy was a bodybuilding fan. He's like, "Holy shit, Sergio's working at my shop!" You know. <laughs> so he goes, "I gotta, I gotta see what he eats." So he snuck <laughs> into the cafeteria at lunchtime. Yeah. And Sergio was drinking uh, Mountain Dew and eating Twinkies. <laughs> and he looked like a freaking freak. That was a high protein meal. If Sir, I think if Sergio had known what he was doing nutrition wise, um, and pro he probably was on almost no drugs too, I guarantee it. Yeah, Diana he would have known if he would have had like a trainer like today, like a coach, like a, if I would have done his diet or whatever, yeah. you know, he probably would have been like, like, like Victor Richards. He probably would have. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, he probably did. just had that tiny waist and the structure it was just man, there was nobody like him. 
and he didn't know what he was doing. He, no. you know, he got beat by Arnold because Arnold knew just a little more. Than he right, did. right, right. <laughs> Arnold was a better poser when that counted, yeah. and he, yeah. he knew how to yeah. diet better, and he knew how to trick him. And he and Arnold was a bigger guy because he was taller. Yeah. But yeah, but Sergio, they were always guys. I remember when I used to started training in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, when I went to college there, and um, there would be these guys. There were a couple bodybuilders at the gym there, and they were really they were good, you know. And these guys, like you said, they would work, you know. Nine to five, they come in the gym at five o'clock, you know, yeah. from work, you know, just I don't know how they did it. They would uh, work in yeah. manual labor jobs too. Yeah. And they would come in and they would bang out, you know, and they'd be in the gym for an hour and a half, two hours, train, and then, you know, get ready for shows. And I'm like, oh, Yeah, these guys are amazing, you know. Yeah. I don't know how they're doing it, you know. And back in the 70s and 80s, they were all eating low-carb diets. Well, not the 80s so much. Maybe we're at 70s. No, 70s, yeah. The 70s, yeah. they did low carb. And then, then 80s was more carbs, I think. Yeah, more, more high fat. carb. Yeah. Because, you know, and the reason why it wasn't that they learned anything different, it was that the, the, uh, the, I guess the top guys, American Heart Association started putting out, oh, the, yeah, yeah, eat low fat, eat more carbs, yeah. heart disease. And so everyone thought, well, that uh, we got to eat carbs now. And so, yeah. Which just made everyone fatter, basically. Now, for a bodybuilder, it didn't matter because we, you know, we we managed our macros according to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if the carbs, if you weren't losing weight, it, you know, you, you lowered your carbs. Lavroni yeah. said it today. Lavroni would just eat fish and vegetables, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he looked like a, you know, better than anyone. So I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, it, it works. You know, he. It's funny. Because uh, I was asking Kevin, because Kevin travels like every weekend all over the world. And I'm like, you know, where is the best food? He goes, yeah, you know me, Dave, because I still eat my fish and vegetables. And <laughs> really? I have a little more carbs these days. But, you know, yeah. I order pretty much the same thing, you know. And he, because he was saying, I said, where do you like the food the most? He said, Greece. You know, Greece is probably the best mm. food. Um, but, you know, every country's got its own little, you know, great yeah. thing. But he said, I really like, because, you know, in Greece, they have the really fresh fish. You know, they catch it right there and they make it for you. Yeah, and, uh, you know he likes you know all the you know olive oils and all that stuff, and so uh, yeah, you know, I said yeah, well, I could, I could, I, I definitely probably would agree. I've never been to Greece, but I'm sure if I went to Greece, I would love the food too. Yeah, yeah, because that's my kind of that Mediterranean diet is definitely my uh, my cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, Kevin had some great battles with uh, Flex too, man, in those oh, yeah. classics and at the Olympias and everything. And what a rivalry those two had. The 96 Arnold, which is the Arnold I actually helped Kevin with, yeah, you know, was, might have been the best battle between those two guys. They were like a one-point decision Kevin won by. Yeah, yeah. And it was only because Kevin was a lot – that was the biggest Kevin ever was. I don't know if you knew that. You yeah, know? yeah. And I had Kevin using insulin while he was dieting, mm. like a long-acting – a fast-acting insulin because if this guy's a genetic freak. I bet he doesn't even absorb all his food. Mm. And so I gave him the protocol I was using, and, and of course, you know – being the genetic hyper responder that he is, he he probably put on you know fifteen pounds of muscle during the prep, you know, because <laughs> Kevin never really took a lot of drugs, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and he had I remember he had like some real humotrope kits, and I'm like, oh, these are good, Kevin. I said these are really good. Yeah. And he was taking like you know he was taking like four IU's of, of humotrope, and and then he was doing like like eight units of like humulin R or something like that twice a day. And, you know, I just said, make sure you eat, eat at least 40 grams of carbs per meal. And, and he's like, all right, all right, all right. And, and, you know, and he had some other stuff. Some of the stuff he was taking was fake at the time. I remember I said, get rid of this. It doesn't even, yeah. not even do it. And so once he got on that regimen, you know, he just like, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I'd see pictures from him. He said to me, and I'm like, this guy's growing. He's getting bigger. <laughs> And and he he was I think he was like two sixty five or something like that for that show. Yeah, which was big yeah for he Kevin. was huge in that show. Yeah. Kevin was only like five nine and a half something like that. Right. He wasn't that tall, right? You know? And Flex was really good at that show too. But I think Kevin was just a little bigger than him, you know. Yeah, yeah. Flex was pissed when he lost. Yeah, yeah. And and, and you know what? It was it was a close show. It wasn't a it wasn't like a blowout. It was it was definitely no. close. It was a hard, yeah. hard hard show to judge, you know. Yeah, their rivalry goes back to the 91 Nationals when they took one yeah. and two at the Nationals. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, they weren't the same bodybuilder, but, you know, right. Kevin Kevin was a freak at that show. He was unbelievable. You could tell that guy was going to be one of the top pros. The in, progress in that he made from the 91 Junior Nationals, where DeMeo beat him, actually, and to, to that right. 91 uh, Nationals, Nationals was, was unbelievable. Only like, in a couple months. <laughs> Chris and Tito said, couldn't believe what he saw when he saw this guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was, you know, that was 
But that's why I really thought Kevin had – when I saw his genetics, and I, and I told Kevin the story in person, I, I wanted to quit bodybuilding because he's that – he was that, you know, that genetically blessed, structurally yeah. speaking, structurally yeah. speaking. The way that his muscles went together, the delts into the triceps. Right, right. I said – I'd never seen anything like it up close yeah. like that. I'm like, this is – this is – this. he's a different human being than I am. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it doesn't matter how much muscle I put on my body, I, I will never look like this. And, right, which is a very right. hard thing to swallow when you're coming up as a bodybuilder, and in your mind, you're delusionally thinking that you're going to be Mr. Olympia one year. Right, you know, right. If you, you say to yourself, hard. "Wait a minute, um, he's from another planet," you know, he's not from <laughs> this planet, you know. Right. I truly believe that Kevin could have beat Dorian had he, yeah, not torn the pack and would have project gone on the trajectory of getting better and better and better. Yeah. I think he would have. I think he would have passed him. Now, like Kevin said, would that have shortened his life? <laughs> Quite yeah. possibly. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Might he have been super crazy injured? You know, possibly. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think genetically, Kevin had the the tool set to be Mister Olympia. Yeah, I've got the video from that '91 Nationals prejudging, and there was a lot of good guys in that. But when yeah. Kevin comes out, it's just he's at another level. It's just a different. He's a different breed, you know. Yeah. And people don't rem don't remember, but he had really, really, really good legs. Yeah, he like, did. They might have been his best body part. So yeah, yeah. Later in his career, when people were criticizing his legs because he had that knee injury, you know, he had a, a bad knee. Yeah. That wasn't Lavroni legs. No. Lavroni had really good legs. Look yeah. at the look at the ninety one uh, or the ninety two uh, Olympia. Olympia. Yeah. yeah. You want to see legs? Go look at those. Remember those. Flex magazine shots where he was kind of laying down. Yeah, and, I was just going to mention that. I was just going to so you could see all the separation in the quads. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, I wish I could find those. And you know what I really liked about Kevin? And I, I don't think I appreciated it much as when he was competing as I do now when I look at posing routines of him and stuff was he had his own style. You know, he had his own way to pose. He had his own attitude on stage. And you don't see that as much anymore. Any, you know, so he really... He was a real individual, and uh, I think that's what – and he was so comfortable on stage when he was posing. He was just totally relaxed, and he was like a rock star out there. You know, he posed to the right music. He always posed to Creed, which right. I loved, you know, yeah. and he just controlled the stage. And, man, you don't, you just don't see that as much anymore. Do you know that he told me that he, he never, ever rehearsed his routine? I believe that, yeah. He would wing it. He yeah. would go out there and wing it, and he said, I would just feel the music and pose. Yeah, he knew which poses he looked best in, and he knew how to put it all That's, together. That takes balls. I got news yeah. to you. That takes some set of balls to be. Able That's to what I'm it. saying. He was so relaxed, and he was so at ease on stage. Uh, yeah, it's, it's he was like I said. I, I, I you know, I, I respect him because he, you know, he, he, he did, you know, he wanted more from bodybuilding than just you know yeah. winning the Olympia. But he definitely could have been Mr. Olympia. This I have no doubt in my yeah. mind. Uh, I agree. One. Let me see what I'm trying to look. I'm trying to find that picture of him laying on the rocks. I don't I don't see it anywhere, but it would be interesting if um they would have judged the Olympia back then, like they do now, where they'll take it away and you know put new people in and stuff. That would have been a lot more interesting back then. Yeah, I don't think he actually beat um Dorian any of those times, but I think I he, don't either. No. But I think he could have if he would have kept going. He would have kept going, yeah. Proving. I think, you know, I think he got a little nervous and a little scared when he tore the pack and he realized he was a little vulnerable and, and he just said, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to, they're not going to let me be. Maybe, I think that what Joe Weider told him that maybe he said that maybe that kind of turned mm -hmm. him off, you know? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. I think he thought, you know what? I'm never going to, I'm never going to win. I'm never going to beat Dorian. So why am I going to put my jeopardy, my health in jeopardy? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I thought Dorian should have lost twice. I thought he should have lost to Sean Ray in 94 and I thought he should have lost to Nasser in 97. You know what? Yeah, Dorian's Dorian's problem was that if he if his conditioning wasn't spot on, you you saw all his structural defects. Yes. Body. Yeah. That's and true. and that and that's what that's why you know he didn't look he had to be a hundred percent every time he was on stage. Yeah. Which he mostly was, you know. Yeah. So. And when he know. was, he was so grainy hard that oh my god, nobody could beat him. No, no, it was, it was nuts, ridiculous. I can't find that great picture of him on the rocks, but do you think Ronnie should have lost in uh, 02? Yeah, you know what? I think that was his 
they they threw him that 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 Olympia. They gave him they gave him if he would have come back in 03 and then off, he would have lost 03. You know, I, I I don't think he was his best. I think if Jay was there, I think Jay would have won. Oh yeah, I do too, for sure. I just think that they didn't who would they who would you have put in there? Gunter? Yeah, I, I don't think they were ready to go that that route. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, Gunter just, played so low in the first round, the relaxed round, that he had no hope of catching up. But by the time they got to the night show, he had peaked. And his yeah. posing routine, as you remember, was crazy because the crowd was just going absolutely nuts. I think they almost gave him a standing ovation yeah, for his I, posing. I, I, I was there. I was in the audience. Actually, yeah. you know, it was funny because there was there was a, a, a jewelry company called Hearts of Iron. They were sponsoring. Yeah. It was a woman from Long Island, and she was sponsoring me and Gunther. She loved yeah. Gunther. And we were sitting in the audience together watching it. She's like, Gunther's going to win. And I'm like, they're not going to let him win. I right. said, but he does look really good. And and I think that's why they threw – I think Weeder was thinking strategically, what sh- how can I do this? I can't let Ronnie lose because he's my cash cow. He loves Gunther. We'll let Gunther win the next show, the sh- show of strength. And then yeah. – That'll create like a rematch type of thing, and then with yeah. Jay back in the picture too in next year, yeah. it's going to be a crazy, you know, uh, who's going to win the Olympia? Yeah, and, and that was that was when they posed on the tables at the press conference. Right? Yeah, That's but it was great because Ronnie came back better, you know, and it was, oh, a, it yeah. was a great it was a great yeah. battle, you know, at that yeah. show. So, so it the, worked. The story I heard was that Ronnie wins the Arnold in 01 and looking amazing. Right. Then he goes to the Olympia in 01, and it's him and Jay. And it's close. And then Jay, I think, beat him at the prejudging. And then Ronnie yeah. pulled it out the night show. Yeah. So what I heard was that the judges talked to Chad or they talked to Ronnie and they said, Ronnie, you need to come in like you came in at the Arnold. If you come in like that, you'll win. You got to come in uh, hard. Like I, got so he was, I think he was 247 at the Arnold. Well, by this time, by the time they got to Olympia, he was just getting, he was growing. He couldn't get yeah. down to 247. No, no. So I saw the uh, battle for the Olympia that Mitsuro used to tape, and right. I saw it in 02 when he was off. And I saw him like four weeks, I think, before the contest, and he was huge at like 285, 290, and he was hard. And then he went into the show at, I think, like 245. So he oh lost God. all that weight in like three weeks or four weeks. And so he was flat, and that's why he was so flat. He, I mean, the only thing he had was – I remember even, like, his biceps were flat. The only thing he had was a good back, and his thighs were still good, but his chest was flat, his biceps were flat. Yeah. And he, that's why he lost all his impact, you know. And then you after – You think Chad just over diuretic him for that show? Yeah, I think they did what the judges told him, and I think they said, well, we got to get you down to this weight. But I think he just had too much muscle mass at that time because the Mitsuro tape, he, did, he, wasn't, he wasn't smooth. He was – rock hard you know right right so yeah i think you're right and probably that's why they came back he, that's why chad's probably like we're gonna bring you in huge for next yeah year. yeah after the, after he lost to gunther they said fuck that we're just <laughs> yeah. going in big yeah. and i yeah, think no one's probably, gonna size you on stage that's for he sure. probably yeah. could have been close to 287 in 02 instead of 03 but i think they just did it because yeah i'm know, sure they it was just, over, they just let him go they just said get as big as you want you know yeah yeah i i think that's exactly what happened as well here's uh Let's see. Here's Ronnie backstage. Yeah, you're right. He looks much smaller. Here he is in 02 backstage with Triple H. Yeah. I mean, Triple H looks bigger than him. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, he was really flat. Yeah, you could just see his his lats don't even look big here. And he has no. huge lats normally. Yeah. You could definitely over you could over and luckily for Lon, Ronnie's sake, he's he's such a genetic freak. He probably gained the muscle back in two weeks, you know. So now, I think when he lost to Gunther a couple weeks later, he was bigger. Um, yeah. But I think he also went on that tour, didn't he? And I think he won the first show, and then he came back. So then he was traveling, too, so his body was kind of worn down. But I think yeah. he was bigger, but Gunther just uh, had the momentum, and they gave it to him because he was because Ronnie was still off, I think, that whole year. He has the uh, picture with, uh, along with Gunther right here. Now that, that that was the show of strength, wasn't it? I, I think so, yeah. But you can see, I mean, Hunt is bigger than Ronnie. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that never happens to Ronnie, you know. Well, I remember he, that, that pose down that year at the Olympia, man. I thought Gunther just beat him on every shot. You know, yeah. he was bigger, he was harder, and the crowd was with him. And, I mean, if they would have gave Gunther the title, I think the crowd would have went crazy. What What do you think happened to Gunther? What, what, why did he disappear? He kind of, like, faded away after that, right? 
Yeah, he wasn't as good the next year. I think I don't know. It's just he, he didn't, didn't really have the structure. He, you know, his waist was a little wide. But I think just that one that one time in 02, man, that was the that was the apex of his career. You know, he yeah. just he I, hit I, it. He I, just I, hit I, it so perfectly. Something happened. I think something. He must have injured himself. I'm telling you because yeah, he was at the peak of his powers and he was young still. So yeah, yeah. It it doesn't make sense that he just dropped off the. Uh, you know, guys don't just stop. You know what I mean? Unless something yeah. happens. You know, so yeah, he never looked that good again. No, no, no. He was that was it. But you know what? He could. Well, like Dexter, he could always say, I beat Ronnie Coleman at yeah, while yeah. Ronnie was right in the rain. That was the only – people don't remember because Ronnie had eight straight Olympia titles, but he lost that show. You know, yes, like, yeah. So – And just back never then, happened. Mr. Olympia never lost, whether it was no. at the Olympia or any other show. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I, and there was a lot of money. I think they gave away 100 grand for that show, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is why Ronnie did it because he wanted the money, obviously. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie always said – Ronnie was so honest. Ronnie would say if there was a giving away a lot of money, he he was going to be at that show, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, so, that's why he did the Arnold because he wanted the uh, the Hummer. He wanted the Hummer. I think he just wanted the Arnold title. <laughs> I think that's really really. He, he wanted Arnold to raise his hand up in the air. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, anything free, Ronnie likes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he joined the gym in the first place. That's right. Like you got to you got to take advantage of those freebies. All right. Well, you're going to be uh, out at the Olympia. I think on Friday. You said right. Yeah, I'm gonna go out there. Uh, it's right down the street, so uh, yeah. I'll, and I'll try to get there Saturday as well. Uh, yeah, and we can at least do maybe do the wrap up with us and everything like that. So yeah, I Jay actually Jay Cutler told me when I interviewed him, he's like, I'm gonna do the wrap ups with you guys. So that should be a, a good That'll crew we have wrapping up the shows. Yeah, after the show's yeah. over. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that because Jay's got some really strong insights, and Jay, you know, Jay's not afraid to say what he thinks. You know. Like yeah. a lot of guys don't want to insult. Jay's like, you know, I don't want to insult lose. anyone, but here's this is what the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it should be a should be an exciting Olympia. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, another episode of the history of bodybuilding is in the books. We were supposed to cover the just the 08 Olympia, but you guys got the special 2023 <laughs> Iron Road to the Olympia special edition. We talked about almost every Olympia. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's show. I'm Dave Palumbo with John Hansen. We'll see you next time.